Okay, so today we're going to build a five lug disc brake rear end for Project Wide Fox. So if you've never taken one apart, now is the time to get your pad and pencil ready and get your shop tools together. <music> Okay, so what I have in front of me is a Ford 8.8 .8 rear end. Now this is the one that really originally came out of the 92 that was wrecked. Now it's going to go into the 80 Project Wide Fox, the wide body I'm building. So what we're going to do today is just take out the four lug axles and get rid of the drum brakes and put on some 97 GT five lug axles with the disc brakes that go on the end. A lot of times people want to change over to the five lug just for the fact of a better wheel option than the four lug. And then since I'm going to the wide body, uh, I'm going to already get new wheels anyway, so it doesn't matter. But five lug is definitely the way to go for wheel options. Now switching from the four lug drum brakes, obviously going to a disc brake is better for braking. And there's a lot of other pieces that go with it to convert your brake lines over till they attach. Also go with a, a different master cylinder. You have some booster options you can change and there's also some other pieces to go with it. So today all we're gonna do is just go ahead and swap over the axles and the disc brake assemblies and I'll show you piece by piece how to do that. So obviously the first thing to do is to get all the fluid out of the axle itself. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so in order to start getting ready to get the axles off, I need to take obviously the drums off. So if yours are rested on or anything else, you can just give them a tap with a hammer and they should slide off relatively easy. I'll say that, relatively easy. So this is the axle itself. Obviously it goes through the tube down in the center in here. We'll take this apart in a minute to show you how to tape that out. But what you can notice is you got an axle in here. You've also got a brake drum assembly and then it's connected at the back to uh, a fluid line coming from your booster, from your distribution block, and then you've also got a parking brake assembly that needs to go with it too. All right, so once you have the drums off, you're next gonna roll over your gear set until you see the center pin and then the holding pin here. So this little bolt is an eight millimeter socket or a wrench. And now I, I would recommend just using a kind of a socket or a wrench to break it loose and then make sure you use a wrench to take it off. The socket will actually hit against this uh, girdle piece here, this bolt cap, and actually lodge in there. So use a wrench to be able to get this out. Once this comes out, you can then take this pin out, and then you can roll over and take the C-clips out. Okay, so once you have this out, what you're gonna take out are these C-clips. Now you can see the axle stubbing out right there. Once that pin is out, the main pin, you can push the axles inward and then these C-clips just need to come out. Now these go down over that piece there and they may fall, so just kind of be careful and take them out. But these just need to be set aside for later and now you can start taking your axles out. Okay, so to take this axle out, now it basically has the center piece where it's sitting in here where you just took the C-clips out and then outside here it is sitting on a bearing race or a bearing and a seal. When you take these out, you want to make sure that you don't nick the seal itself. So if you're going to replace the seals, once you get it out, you can obviously do that if they're leaking. If they're not, try not to make them leak when you take it out. So at this point, this just needs to slide out real gently, take real ease and care of getting out the seal, and then just set it aside because we're going to be done with it for this point until we replace it with the five lug going back in. that is out easy peasy okay what you're gonna have left now is the drum brake set so it's gonna have a hydraulic line going in which you need to disconnect which is over going to be on this side here you're gonna have the uh, brake cable park the brake cable going in which is on the back side also and then you've got four bolts so you can see kind of two on the top two on the bottom those are basically just a nut and bolt combination so you're gonna hold one and drive the other off so you can basically hold the back of the head of the of the bolt itself. Take the nuts off once you take those four off. 
this whole assembly is going to come off. So it's going to be your choice whether you want to disconnect uh, the parking brake cable now or later. But at least to get this off, because the hydraulic line is connected, uh, fastened at least to the housing, it's easiest to take it off. And then you can take off the drum brake plus the park brake cable uh, as one assembly and make that a little bit easier. Okay, so once you have everything taken apart from the line, the hydraulic line going in, plus the axle out and everything, take off your four bolts holding your drum brake assembly to the housing. And these are just going to be a 9 16 wrench and a uh, wrench on the back and then a socket on the front and just use that. Now what you'll notice is that sometimes these are going to stick. They're, they've kind of uh, surface welded themselves together basically. So you can just use either a hammer on the back side and just kind of tap it around all the way around the circumference. But it should come off in one complete set and then you can then clean off this area before you put on your disc brake setup and if you're going to replace the seals or the bearings now is a great time to do that also so just clean up this area and then go get your new parts for the ready to go in okay so now that you have the drum brakes off you can now get your backing plates together for your disc brakes you're going to notice that on, each, on these they're going to have an L or an R which left is driver R is right or passenger. And once you get them set on there to where the flange on the back sits flush and it sits up on the nice, nice little hub ring, you can then put your bolts on. Now the bolts were coming from the back through the drum on the drum brakes obviously and then on the disc you're actually going to push them back the other way so the bolts are going to go through the hub here and that's just to make sure they don't stick out further than the surface here. It's recessed but at the same time you don't want to do that. So now your caliper ears here should be pointing up if you're facing down like this. Basically they're going to be on the side of the cover and the gears that would come out the back that way. Now you're going to leave your uh, hydraulic line loose for now because it has nothing to attach to at this point. And then uh, you can clean up this stuff if you want to. I'm just going to throw it on for now. I've got some other things I'm going to work on. So I just want to make sure it's functionally fit and I can get it under the car and get it off the floor because I need the space back. So now once that's together, you can then go ahead and get your five lug axles together and start assembling those to the housing itself. Okay, so once you have everything ready to go for your new axle, you're gonna make sure the five lug axle is clean, which means you need to degrease it if you need to. Get any surface rust off there, especially down here on the seal, you wanna make sure that that is very clean and a good metal surface to where it's not going to have rust on it that will wear on the seal over time. Once it's there and everything's clean, you can then slide it in place. And it's literally just going to go in. Make sure you don't, remember, don't bung up your seal up here because it leaks. Slide it all the way in until it gets to the center. And then you may have to twist it just a little bit to get the splines to lock up uh, into your diff carrier here with your gears. The axle itself is a good conversation piece there's a lot of different ways to be able to do this to do a five lug so if you want to keep the same length on the axle you can either order custom aftermarket ones that are five lug with the fox body length there are certain ford ranger axles or ford aerostar axles that are 28 spline which match the carrier from the oem or you can do what i'm doing and go to an SN95. Now what I'm putting on is everything from a 97 GT. So the axles are three quarters of inch longer, which means they push out this way. On the back side, there's an exciter ring for the ABS. And the SN95 actually had ABS where the Fox body did not. So that pushes it out and you don't need the ring. So if you want to take the ring off, you can. Or if you, like me, maybe someday along the way are going to go ABS, I would leave the ring on or not. But this axle is at least in place, and then once it's in, you can then push it in, put in your C-clip, basically the same thing as putting out, put it in the groove, make sure it's snapped in, and then you can slide your axle out to make sure it locks against the C-clip. Do that on both sides, and then you're about ready to put your pin in, your uh, keeper pin, and then you can also put the cover on. Okay, so the next pieces that you're going to put on are obviously going to be your brake rotors. And then these can be anything you want, either that come with it and that. These that came with it were a little bit rusty with surface rust. So I just kind of scrubbed them off and that. And I'm going to go back and clean them later on. But I at least want to get them assembled and up off the floor and under the car. That way I can know, kind of be able to fit everything together. The calipers that came with it are off the 97 GT again. 
they have a left and a right hand mark and the caliper bodies with the springs are going to go inboard so obviously you can see this is just the pad and that so everything's inboard you'll also notice that the top of the axle is where the bleed is going to be so obviously air can go up and out when you bleed it and then for now if you have your conversion parts to be able to hook up your hydraulic line you can do it now or like me i'm just going to plug it up and then i'll come back to it once i get the parts in to be able to convert the uh, 8.8 to uh, from Fox Body to SN95 calipers. Okay, so once you have all your disc brakes on, you've checked everything, and you think you're ready to seal this up, it's time to get your cover. Make sure the sealing surface is clean. If you need to, just take a razor blade or any kind of scraper and just make sure there's no gasket material left on there. Get and get your cover. Make sure it's clean. And it's really kind of up to you if you want to use a gasket or just use RTV. Some people love the gasket, some people do not like the gasket, so I leave it up to you. How you're going to seal this, as long as it gets sealed, doesn't really matter to me. Make sure you add your fluid in either now or later, depending on what you want to do. So just remember, if you want to park the brake cables, you've got to order some conversion lines, and then your hydraulic fluid, or your brake fluid, basically, that's going to go from your master cylinder, from the lines down in. That all needs to be converted also, but cool. You can order parts and have those into you and then just make it all done. So I'm going to go ahead and do that later on, but at least I'll get the axle up off the ground and I'll get it back under Wide Fox so that I can measure for custom wheels and get some other pieces up off the floor like the Lord control arms and all that. So if you guys have any questions, I know I've kind of rushed through this again, but it's really pretty simple once you have all the small pieces Keep track of all the parts and then have everything ready to go and it goes together honestly pretty darn simply if you have questions drop me comments or uh, give me a like or anything else now if you have anything else you want to see along the way let me know otherwise today is the day we close it up we'll see you next time